previously on Techphobe. Here's a question the prosecutors should ask on Cross. Who does the chief operating officer report to? And now, Sonny Belwani reported to you, he asked. He did, Holmes said. You could fire him at any time, Leach asked. I could, Holmes responded. If you're stumbling upon this video first thing after waking up from a years-long coma, Elizabeth Holmes is the former CEO and founder of Theranos, a biotech startup that raised millions in funding and became valued at just under $10 billion for claiming to have invented a device that could use a simple finger prick to run all sorts of medical tests. Well now, Holmes is on trial for wire fraud because it turns out that the devices didn't work, and it's alleged that she knew about this the whole time while she lied to investors, customers, and patients for years. Holmes took the stand this week in her own defense, and she just wrapped up giving her direct testimony. And now, the prosecution has their opportunity to examine her on cross, and they just got her to admit that she was in the driver's seat the whole time. Let me plug the channel, and then I'll tell you all about it. I'm a software engineer with almost 25 years in the tech industry, but even though I make tech for a living, lately I'm getting kind of doom-pilled on the whole tech industry. Whether it's big tech censorship, a social media mental health crisis, or CEOs like Elizabeth Holmes who lie through their teeth while they fake it till they make it, I'm kind of done with it all. So I call myself Techphobe here on YouTube, where I call out issues in my industry and I share tips on how you can take better care of yourself online. So hit like, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications because I wouldn't want you to miss an episode. Alright, according to Ars Technica, at this point in her criminal trial, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes' best chance for acquittal is for the jury to believe that she was a puppet being controlled by her boyfriend, company president Ramesh Sunny Balwani. Yesterday, the prosecution attempted to pick apart that defense. In Holmes' first several days on the stand, jurors heard about Balwani's abusive behavior. I made a video discussing this yesterday, so I'm going to skip over this part. Link in the description. The question for the jury, though, is whether that influenced Holmes' actions. Was she in control of Theranos? Did her relationship with Balwani make her oblivious to a fraudulent scheme? To be convicted of wire fraud, which Holmes has been charged with, a person's participation must be both willful and knowing. Yesterday, the prosecution set out to make it clear that Holmes was both in control and aware that what she was doing was wrong. As I said yesterday, and this is my opinion, even if we were to give Holmes the full benefit of the doubt and accept the abuse allegations, that doesn't mean that she wasn't in control of her own choices and actions. There's a reality where Balwani is a rapist and Holmes committed fraud. Remember, Holmes doesn't have to prove her innocence because she's presumed innocent. She just has to show that the evidence against her doesn't prove her guilt. So if her angle is to convince the jury that she was a puppet, well, I'm not a lawyer, but that sounds stupid. I mean, if you think about it, by playing that card, you're admitting to absolutely everything. You're basically saying, yeah, the fraud happened, it just wasn't me who did it. Well, now you're climbing a very uphill battle where you've got to show some really strong evidence that someone else basically held a gun to your head and forced you to act against your will. In one damning exchange, the prosecution returned to the Theranos reports that Holmes had doctored with pharmaceutical company logos. In earlier testimony, Holmes admitted to adding the logos herself, though she claimed her intentions were good. This work was done in partnership with those companies, and I was trying to convey that, she told the court. But yesterday, the prosecution pressed her on the matter. Jurors saw contracts between Theranos and the pharmaceutical companies showing that the use of their logo was expressly forbidden without prior written authorization. In a previous video I did, I used the analogy where I hypothetically consult with Intel about a chip design. For example, I talk to a few engineers, I get them to help me with a few key problems, and then I stick their logos on a sales brochure. And when you tell me that you thought Intel made the thing, I say I was just giving my partners credit. And I was trying to show how this can be deceptive to those who are reading the reports. But now we find out that the pharma companies had contracts with Theranos that expressly prohibited them doing this? I'm... I... I'm speechless. 
And something else we're just learning now that the prosecution's getting to examine her is that apparently Holmes had received the legal counsel advising her against certain claims they were making in their marketing materials and to investors. The second damning exchange involved a legal review of Theranos marketing materials, including its website, in advance of the Walgreens rollout. Holmes was directly involved in the process, emails show. I haven't quite worked my way through the website, but I'm worried, an attorney emailed Holmes. For example, every time you say better without specifying what it is better than, you're making a comparative claim, at least to all market leaders. You must be able to substantiate these claims. Lawyers working on the review proposed a number of changes, including replacing highest level of accuracy with high levels of accuracy. They also suggested to Holmes that her company provide evidence for certain claims. Many of those tweaks made it onto the website, but the original claims, including highest level of accuracy, remained unchanged in materials she sent investors. Holmes had been made aware that her exaggerated claims weren't legally advisable, yet she continued to make them to investors. I keep saying that I'm not a lawyer, and that's because I'm not. I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to legal analysis. But if the prosecution has to prove that Elizabeth Holmes acted knowingly and willingly, the evidence doesn't get any stronger than a lawyer advising her against misleading investors. And then the narrative that she was Balwani's victim and puppet came crumbling down. Ultimately, all roads lead to the CEO, Leach asked her. Yes, she replied. The buck stops with you, he said. I felt that, Holmes replied. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like my content and share the video around or not. It's your life. I'll see you in the comments.